Let's take a moment and we'll walk through the system settings on the AVIX 6000 next. We can get there by touching the gears up here and going to our toolbox right here. First up is our navigation related settings. Let's take a look at that. We'll open that up. Here is our navigation info window which is switched on right now and that is information across the bottom of the screen when you're on an AV screen giving you navigation information on the bottom. This is the AV and app guide mode and when there is an upcoming maneuver for navigation you'll be aware of that information on the screen. We'll go back up. Next is our AV source settings. Here we have a number of different settings to, to choose from. We have the mix track settings and you can take a look at the mix tracks video to get some more information about the mix track settings and the flash patterns available for the mix track settings. Next up is our radio settings where we can make changes to the system for HD radio. We'll go back. Next up is our Sirius XM settings and we can make some adjustments to the Sirius XM settings right here. And you can see additional information about each of those things under the HD radio and Sirius XM settings. If you tag songs using HD radio or other sources, you can choose where to send those tags to connect to an iPod, either USB 1 or USB 2. Next up is uh, Bluetooth audio showing up in the source, in the source list. We can have Bluetooth audio show up in the source list, or if you turn this off, it won't be in your source list. I like to have that uh, turned on. We'll go back up. And we have EverScroll next. Right now, EverScroll is turned on. This means when text shows up on your screen, either from HD radio or MP3 sources, something like that, it will continuously scroll across the screen. If you don't want to see that continuously scroll, just switch the EverScroll off. Next is our input and output settings, and there's a number of very interesting settings here. The first is our smartphone setup, and this is a very important setting. Uh, with smartphone setup, here we choose what type of device we're going to connect to the 6000, either an iPhone or an iPod, and if you're going to connect an Android device, we choose the other setting. And once you've chosen the device, then you get to choose what type of connection. So for example here, we're going to choose iPhone and iPod, and we have our choice of a USB connection, digital AV adapter, or wireless through Bluetooth. So USB connection is commonly used for iPhone 4 or 4S. Digital AV adapter is usually used for an iPhone 5, 5C, or 5S. And wireless through Bluetooth is if you don't want to have a wired connection, you can still stream Bluetooth audio. For right now, we're going to choose USB. Depending on what you choose here, different functions will be available across the bottom, and this will show you what functions will be available with your type of settings. We'll go back up. Next is our AV input settings. Right now, we have our selected as a camera. There's an audio video input on the rear of the 6000. That can be selected as a source if we want it to. And if we want to have a second camera in our system, a backup camera and a second camera, we can choose camera right here as our AV input. If you use auxiliary input regularly, you want to have the auxiliary input turned on. If you typically don't use auxiliary input, you can shut it off here. And if, you're, if you have a phone connected to run apps on the screen, video adjustment for those apps can be uh, operated right here. Next up is our camera settings. And for more information about the camera settings, check out the camera settings videos. We'll go back up, we'll scroll down a little here. Next up is our demo mode. The demonstration mode right now is switched off. And our system languages next. We have a number of languages to choose from here. If you don't read languages other than English, be careful what you choose here. It might be tough to get back to English. We can restore our settings back to factory defaults for a number of different, uh, the number of different settings here for audio, the themes, and the Bluetooth settings can all be set back to factory defaults or all set back as one. Next up is our keyboard, right now set to English. We have the same uh, language options there as we do for the main language in the system. The beeps that you're hearing when I touch buttons on here can be switched on or off. We'll keep those on for right now. Next up is our picture adjustment. And we have picture adjustments for the rear camera, the second camera, and the source. So we can make brightness, contrast, color adjustments for all three of those different uh, items the source, the second camera, and the rear camera individually. Once we've made those adjustments, we can move back up. Next is our touch panel calibration, and I'm not going to open this window, but if you touch on touch panel calibration, you'll be started into a sequence of on-screen touches that will calibrate the touch screen operation. 
Next up is our system information where we can get some information about the firmware of the system. We can see what version of firmware there is and if we need to update that firmware. This is where we would start the firmware update from SD or from USB card. For navigation settings, our 3D calibration status is very important. And here we can see what our 3D calibration status is and reset the learning of the system on the operation of your vehicle. We'll go back up. And finally is our connection status, also very important for the installation of the system. We can see our GPS antenna position installation if we're using speed pulse information and other information about the, uh, the operation and the installation of the 6000 to your vehicle. We'll go back up and up one more layer. Lastly is our OEM settings and this will be, uh, this will be activated when we have an iDatalink Maestro system operating with the 6000.